Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kolawale joins the conversation this morning as we look through the pages of our national dailies. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Nice All right. Good morning. Uh, thanks once again for being part of the show. Tunde Kolawale is a legal practitioner, but we start off with the punch. The punch says, indefinite strike, federal government summons varsity councils, vice chancellors as parents... Grumble. NUC meets pro chancellors Tuesday to review action, reach consensus. Vice President Yemo Sibajo, APC governors, beg lecturers to end strike. Parents Association says ASU inconsiderate. Minister insists on no work, no pay. Lecturers deserve. Pay despite strike. That's what the ASU president is saying. I mean, this is the riders dominating uh, the banner caption this morning. 6,068 6, Nigerian doctors moved to United Kingdom under uh, President Muhammad Buhari. 6,068 doctors moved to the United Kingdom under Buhari. And uh, 46 billionaire debt and CAA threatens to withdraw airlines license. Oil earnings dropped by 29% to 790 billionaire. That's according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Federal government projects 120 trillion as three year consumption expenditure. Army kills terrorist, arrests three suspects in Kaduna. Appeal court nullifies 20 billion damages, heads to Supreme Court. Uh, that's Igboho. Hoodlums invade Lagos communities and rob residents. Victims lament. Undergraduate lovers die in Quara, collapses or corpses found naked. Tunubu 6, Jonathan support APC denies internal rifts. These are the headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. Away from the Punch, we have the leadership. As a strike, federal government summons pro-chancellors, VCs, APC governors, beg union. It's getting very interesting. Federal government moves to avert agony of subsidy and fuel Im importation next year. <laughs> I like how all of the statements are put out. Uh, declares war on oil thieves. Commission nine gun boats, NNPC defends surveillance as a contract to private firms, alleges involvement of churches, marks security agencies in crude thefts, provide evidence, go after corporates and religious leader uh, reply. I won't interfere in 2023 elections, President Mohamed Buhari assures Nigerians. Coca turned 70 today, plans 200 million leadership center uh, many trapped as multi-story building collapses in Kanu market. And just before we move away from the leadership, you find alleged organ harvesting. Ukpo sues federal government. Equary Madu wants court order reversed. NBS data reflect Nigeria's reality. Uh, these are the headlines on the leadership. We'll move away from the leadership, and that's because we have the Daily Trust newspaper. Nigeria will stop importing oil by 2023. Kiari is quoted. Signs 20-year supply deal with Dangote. <laughs> Says churches, marks involved in pipeline vandalism. And it means improved economy. That's what experts are saying. Reps uncovered 10 billion oil revenue fraud. 115 killed, 73,379 displaced as flood hits 22 states in the FCT. And CCAA threatens to ground airlines over 24.3 billion naira debts. And CAA threatens to ground airlines over 24.3 billion naira debts. Many trapped for rescued as building collapses at Kanu Market. 25,000 Nigerians missing, federal government, ICRC. We need to act facts on ASU strike, the vice president is quoted to say. 
and 2023, Buhari meets governor, says Nigeria will appreciate APC in six months. We cannot wait. I mean, a lot of people say, what well, you haven't done in eight years. What can you do in six months? Or let's even say seven years, really. Uh, well, that's so much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper. The nation says, Buhari to Nigerians, I won't interfere in next year's poll. Vice President Osibajo challenges governors on economy. ASU strike. Petrol importation to end June 2023. Reverse your decision on strike. Federal government tells ASU. Minister insists all unions demands met. Vice chancellors, pro-chancellors to meet education minister September the 6th. And parents urges parties to resume talks. Again, you find no rift between Tunubu and Adamu over campaign council, says APC. Well, that's what's been reported. Sandy Boho, appeal court reverses 20 billion naira damages against DSS. Well, these are the headlines uh, we have this morning on the Nation newspaper. Tunde Kolawale joins the conversation. Thank you. Well, Tunde Kalawale, let, let's get straight to it. Which of the headlines interests you as we went through the pages for National Dailies? Uh, perhaps we should start uh, with that of the uh, ASO, uh, with reference to the Minister for Education, Mr. Jamu Adamu. You will remember that Mr. Jamu Adamu used to be a columnist for the New Nigeria newspaper. And so many years ago, when Asu had similarly embarked on a very prolonged strike, Mr. Adamu Adamu had written the new Nigerian newspaper that uh, the Asu people should not call off uh, their strike. And he enunciated a lot of reasons why Asu should not um, call off the strike. One of which was that um, the federal government, whether at the state level, I mean the government, whether at the state level, at the federal level, at the local government level, hadn't been paying enough attention to education. And because of their lack of attention, our developmental goals as a nation will be jeopardized. He also mentioned a litany of things I am not product. So you begin to ask yourself, if Mr. Adamu Adamu had in the past, Enjoyed us to not to strike, I mean, not to call up a strike. Why, why do you think, or why is it now that Mr. Adamu is having a change of heart? He's asking us to go back to work when all the things he has invested in the past advocated to be done for us and done for education in Nigeria has never been implemented or carried out. They know of our government. Well, sometimes power is an intoxicant. When you get in there, if you are taught this way before, immediately you get into power, you begin to enjoy its aroma. You begin to have a change of mind and begin to say different uh, uh, things. Furthermore, under our labor law, there is no way we can compare an unwilling employee to go back to work he doesn't, when, he know, when he doesn't want to, to work or when he's on strike. Strike is considered to be a fundamental right which a worker are allowed by law to enjoy and to do. So for me, I'm not too sure that this harassment, that this cajoling, this attempt to throw the hand of the action to the pro chancellor, the vice chancellor, parents uh, association, and what happened. It is going to, I mean, that is going to work. The Nigeria federal government to sit down with us and then as much as possible, even if it is not holy, this at least halfway with regards to the activity. Furthermore, you and I will remember that not too long ago, all the foreign airlines said they were going to pull out of Nigeria because the Nigerian government or the Nigerian nation was owing them 
Lo and behold, the money that was set to be owed to this foreign airline that wanted to pull out. The federal government has been able to source the money. I mean, the federal, I mean, the CBI, the Central Bank, has been able to source the money. And it's now willing to make it available to the foreign airline so that they will continue their operations in the area. Why is the federal government, why is the federal government treating the airline differently? And that's for education, which is more important in the Kabari China. The reason is not perfect. The airline is what the IT politicians and the well to do in the country cannot do without. If all the foreign airlines pull out of Nigeria, it is going to affect the rich Nigerians, it is going to affect the political class or the budget class generally. So for them, that is more important than education. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, let's also yeah. uh, take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Okay. Yeah, but before you go, uh, to the apologies um, uh, 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 for biting in now slightly a bit under the weather. Uh, uh, but I'd like to quickly ask you uh, for your thoughts on, on what the nation needs to has to say, particularly uh, the progressive governor's meeting uh, with His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, two points of note. The President said that he won't interfere in the polls. And then secondly, it was um, uh, noticeable that the Vice President wasn't a part of that meeting. Uh, the progressive governors had to go see the Vice President in his office um, uh, and also commiserate with him following his surgery um, that he had uh, for his leg. Um, are you, should we read any meaning into this? Honestly, I didn't quite get that. Okay, once Can again. Can you repeat the question, yes. please? Yes, yeah. so the, the Progressive Governors uh, Forum met with Mr. President yesterday, as captured on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And uh, he said okay. that he will not be interfering in the 2023 general elections. As some people are saying that uh, they're not uh, okay. buying what he, he, he said. That's number one. Number two, okay. at that meeting they had with him, uh, the vice president was noticeably absent. But um, the APC governors paid him a visit after their meeting with Mr. President at uh, his own office. Um, some people are reading some meaning into that. Should we read any meaning into this? That's a two-pronged question. Uh, and then Elias said, uh, sincere apologies, you didn't hear from me uh, now, a bit slightly under the weather. Uh, but please go on and, and then just give us your thoughts on that. Well, um, let me say this. The vice president, since he lost the primary of his uh, party, has appeared to be a little bit uh, a lukewarm to state activities and what have you. It's not impossible that this Martin O'Reilly, from that crushing defeat that was uh, reached out to him, and she was the baller I met in Nobu, and Miss Alotti may have met you. Uh, but with that as it may, you win some, you lose some. Uh, politics is uh, a game in which you don't expect to win all the time. So the president had better get back to business or to work. Uh, we still have about six or seven months before their government will hand over to another party. As regards the interference in the election, uh, honestly speaking, there are so many ways by which a government can interfere in the integrity of an election. One, we have seen a deliberate effort on the part of Mr. President and the APC government to so, uh, send to INEC or appoint uh, into INEC card carrying members of their political party. Uh, the first they tried to do was that of uh, Levi Onochi, who is a publicity secretary for Mr. President. He was recommended to be a NIMEC um, uh, commissioner. The list of commissioners that has also been forwarded now to the Senate, it has been alleged, contain some names of people who are sympathizers and card carry members of the APC. In fact, one was said to have contested the primary of the APC, the governmental primary of the APC in the recent past, which he lost. So, if at the end of the day, such persons are smuggled into INEC 
chances are that they could be used to compromise the integrity of the election. And that is what the Yaga Africa and some of the uh, human rights organizations have been crying out that the Senate should guard jealously against the appointment of uh, politicians and their sympathizers into the hierarchy of INEX. Another way by uh, which government try to compromise the integrity of election is to use the security forces and also use the wood law that we have all over the place to compromise the integrity of the election. All right. So as, much, as Mr. President says it loudly that he will not interfere in the outcome of 2003 election, we must see, insist that we should not by subterranean means Try to influence the integrity of the election. Today, Kola Wale, let's move away from yes, that please. discourse and uh, right. look at the leadership newspaper and also the Daily Trust. Uh, same issue, but different, you know, uh, caption. Federal government All moves right. to avert agony of subsidy and fuel importation next year. Uh, Nigeria will stop importing oil by 2023. That's how the Daily Trust newspaper captions it. And uh, Kiari is quoted on that. And that's because uh, Nigeria has signed like a 20-year supply deal with Dangote. Uh, that's according to the report. Also, uh, this is also going to happen because there's expected to be some completion on the ongoing maintenance of the nation refineries and almost completed Dangote platform. So uh, this is some of the yardstick. But I'd like you to share your thoughts on this development. Me 2023, yeah. we will stop importation of you know, fuel because we'll be able to uh, meet our domestic demands and maybe, just maybe, we'll just be exporting without having any itches. Well, I doubt it. This is not the first time we'll be getting assurances to this government that uh, importation of uh, fuel will become a thing of the past. In fact, uh, before now, we were told that the Dangote refinery was going to be ready in the year 2022. The year is about to end, and the feeling that I'm personally getting from the Dangote angle is that that refinery may not be ready in the next three or four years, simply because there is still a lot of work to be done on the refinery. And the resources to do the work are no longer forthcoming. The pans are next deep in depth, over by Tangata, over the refinery. The CBN itself no longer has the money to support the Tangata refinery. You will recollect that uh, the federal government had purchased 25% of uh, the shareholding of Dangote Refinery. The reason they did that was to help Mr. Dangote provide the money to complete the refinery. But in spite of the support from the CBN, there is still a wide gap with regard to the resources that are required to complete the refinery, simply because with the collapse of the value of Naira and then the rise in the only currencies, the quantum of money that are now required to complete the refineries has changed dramatically. So, we have Mr. Tangote and the supporters who get the resources to complete the refinery before 2023 is still something or a mystery. Tunde Kolawale, uh, this uh, postulation. Tunde Kolawale. And this... then you're talking about the complexion of uh, the federal government refinery. You remember when the federal government awarded that uh, contract, I think was it last year or late this year, the template that we were given is that the refinery will be repaired over a period of six years. And if they have just gone one or two years into this maintenance, how will it now be possible to complete the maintenance of turnaround in year 2033 and begin to actually flow of wealth in the country? Um, it would appear to me that something doesn't really tally. There is a gap in between what we have been told 
and the project completion date that we were given with regard to the turnaround maintenance of those refineries. And I even say that if the turnaround maintenance of those refineries are completed, what is the assurance that the Nigerian allies who have always supported that refinery will let it work when it is eventually completed? Because immediately it is completed and it is working efficiently, they will no longer need to import fuel. And when they no longer need to import fuel, how will they be able to take money abroad, to buy houses, to pay their children's school fees, and then live the life of luxury that they have always lived in the fallen land. I have the suspicion that the subsidy on uh, petroleum products will go on beyond 2023. I don't have, uh, I am not too convinced that the turnaround maintenance of those refineries or the federal government refineries will be completed before 2023. Furthermore, remember that this subsidy that we are also talking about is a phantom subsidy. In the past, the House of Representatives set up a panel to look into uh, all the subsidies uh, that were being paid to the different oil companies. And it was discovered. And the former CBN governor, Sanusi, had also made a starting revelation that when the Nigerian airline said they have imported 10 cargoes of fuel, in reality, only two cargoes of fuel are coming. Whereas they will insist that they be paid for 10 cargoes of fuel that they are importing. So what I'm drawing out is that uh, we still don't have the real statistics as regards the subsidy that is being paid and the quantum of petroleum products that are being imported into the fuel. That area is still opaque because the Nigerian allies never do anything in the open because of their selfish interests. All right, Tony Kolawale, a story that has gripped the nation and not just Nigeria, but international media uh, ha has been covering this particular story. It's something that has occurred over and over and again. And a lot of people are asking, you know, what do we need to do to make this not to stop this from becoming uh, or to prevent this from happening on the regular as it's been happening? I'm talking about building collapses. We just had one a couple of weeks ago in Lagos, if not a week ago. This time, the Kanu. Uh, uh, market collapses, the GSM market in Kano Metropolis on Beirut Road uh, in Kano State. Uh, the, the public relations officer of uh, Kano uh, State Fire Service, Samino Abdullahi, confessed, confirmed that uh, seven people were rescued alive. But the National Emergency Management Agency went further to say that one uh, person is feared dead while seven were uh, are seriously injured. Um, so what are your thoughts on this Kano market building collapse as it concerns the general issue of um, uh, collapsed buildings in Nigeria, as captured in Daily Trust, which says many trapped for rescued well, uh, as building collapses of Kano market. That's from Daily Trust. Yeah. Like what has happened in Lagos and from other parts of the country, it is usually a heart-wrenching uh, affair when a building collapses. The loved ones are lost. Innocent people who have gone to look for their daily bread get perished in the rubble. And just like you have asked, how can we put an end to this uh, building collapse uh, uh, problem that we have in our hands? Two, three things in my own humble opinion. You go around the places and look at the kind of blocks that we use to build houses uh, today. Those are no blocks in our humble opinion. Some of them are softer than the loaf of uh, bread. So, also look at the iron rods that are used. When you look at the material that has been used for building corruption today, because most of those uh, uh, things are now very expensive. The builders tend to uh, maximize or kind of manage the material that they put into building construction. When they should probably use a 12 mm pipe or iron rod, they will go to 6 mm, they will go for 6 mm. When the bag of cement should make just about 25 blocks, they use it to make about 42 or 45. Look at the kind of sand too that are usually used to mold the block and to cement or plaster 
the buildings. They are not the standard that authorities should be used. Furthermore, the authorities, the regulatory authorities, that should make sure that the buildings meet all the specifications and standards when they are when they are under construction. Do they perform the activities without let or hinder, or without uh, making themselves amenable to being compromised? The answer is a uh, no. So we are now in a conundrum, not just with regard to the material that are being used to build housing, but also to the effective supervision and performance of the controlling authorities. Besides, if you will do your research to get a standard building approval, especially in an environment like Lagos, is more than the camera passing through the eye of the needle. The fortunes are just too much. And the money, the quantum of money that you require to secure building approval, especially in a place like Lagos, is prohibited. So too many times, People no longer go to the regulatory authorities, to the planning authorities, to the soil test people, to really do what they should do. They no longer go to specialists to help them do the foundations of their building. They do it themselves with whatever little experience that they have had. So, we are in the catch-22. And uh, it is not unexpected. When a nation is corrupt, every process of his life will become rotten. And when all process of his life becomes rotten, everything in this nation, in the country, or in the nation, will be similarly affected. That is what we have in our hands. Education has collapsed. The buildings are collapsing. The hospitals are glorified clinics. Brain drain all over the place. Well, um, we pray that God will interfere in the affairs of the Nigerian nation so that we can begin to get it right once again. Well, we need to go right now. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on the issues on the front pages of the National Dailies. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Lady Members. Wish you a lovely week ahead of you. All right, and that's it. Uh, we take a break now, but just before then, We'll let you happen. Uh, let's let you know what happened today in history, being the 31st day in the month of August. Please stay with us.